Hello, confirmation class. Great to see you. Quick reminder to you that when we put out videos for confirmation, we put out two. You should have this video of me talking you through your journaling assignment and also a video from Pastor Febercorn talking you through your catechism lesson for the day. Does not matter which order you do them in. So if you clicked on this one first, totally fine. Just stick with me. What I want to do right now is to talk you through briefly an idea that's important to me. But to do that, I want to tell you a story. Ready? Here's how the story goes. It might be familiar to you. There was a man who had no children. He and his wife had prayed and prayed and prayed for children for years. Believe it or not, this man and his wife still praying for children were super old, like a hundred years old. To make it more confusing, God had told this man that he would have lots of descendants. Now you probably know, but to have lots of descendants, you have to have at least one descendant. Finally, their prayers and God's promise, it happened. They had a child. Do you know the child's name? I do. Then one day, it goes from being a story of celebration to a story that's sad and scary. God comes to this man and he says to him, I need you to take your only son. You're going to go to a mountain and you're going to offer him as a sacrifice to me. They had waited so long, this, this precious child, and now God was saying he needs to be sacrificed. But the man obeyed God, took his son. They went on a long journey. Somewhere along the way, the son even said to the father, he said, Dad, we got wood to make a fire, but I don't see an animal to sacrifice. The man said, God will provide my son. Well, they got there, went up to the top of the mountain, and then the man bound his son, which means he tied his wrists together or his ankles together, something like that. And the father placed his son down on the altar that they had built, and he raised the knife ready to kill this child, to offer him as a sacrifice to God. Do you know what happens next? Suddenly, the voice of an angel stops the man and says, don't kill that child. Now I know for sure that you are obedient to God. Then suddenly they noticed over in the bushes that an animal was caught. And so guess what? When the son asked the father on the road to the mountain, where's the offering? The father said, God will provide. He was right. God provided a ram for them to offer as a sacrifice. Because there was another sacrifice there, the child got to walk down the mountain very much alive. Do you know that story? It's a true story. It's from the book of Genesis in the Old Testament. The father, his name is Abraham, his wife's name was Sarah, the child's name is Isaac, and it happened pretty much just like I told you. It's not just interesting to me, though, because it's history, though it is. It's not just interesting to me because it's true, though it is. It's also interesting to me because it has some connection to how God has worked on us in Jesus. So let me ask you, I want you to think about that story I just told, remembering that it happened thousands of years ago, not just thousands of years before us, it also happened thousands of years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So even though it is that old, think about what I told you about Abraham, Isaac, and the ram given in place of him as an offering. And I want you to think about what that sounds like 
how that's connected to Jesus. Or maybe a better way of saying it is, could you tell me the story of Jesus using that moment? What do you think? Pause the video if you need a moment to think. I'll tell you what my classes thought today at 3.30 and 7. Here's some of the things my students said. They said, well, Isaac was his only son, like Jesus is the father's only son. Someone else mentioned that it happened up on a mountain, just like Jesus was crucified on Calvary's holy mountain. Someone also said that Jesus is like the ram in the thicket. And I said, tell me how. And they said, well, God provides the sacrifice. Jesus dies so that you and I are like Isaac. We get to walk back down the mountain alive. And I thought, yeah, that's totally true. You know what that's called when something happens in the Old Testament that you and I find as having new, beautiful meaning in Jesus? Something that happened a long time ago, and then when we read it again, knowing what happened to Jesus, we think, oh, that's like Jesus. That's called typology. You see, sometimes in the Old Testament, they have prophecies where a prophet says, hey, this is going to happen, and then it does. Like one prophet one time said, hey, something amazing is going to happen. Someone important is going to be born in Bethlehem. Well, you know how that comes true? Yeah, no duh. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. He's the important person. So that's like a promise that it's fulfilled. Those are easy ones to find. The more difficult ones to find are what we're talking about today, typologies, where something happens to a person or, you know, some big event happens or something they do all the time, like sacrifices, where all of a sudden later on, we realize that they have new meaning in Jesus. So this stuff's not just history. It's not just interesting. It's both those things, but it isn't just those things. It also means something to us, is spiritually valuable, and tells us about Jesus. So now, here's what I want you to do. The last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the book of Exodus. We remember that God's people are in slavery under Pharaoh. We also know that God is going to use Moses. And then we know that God strikes Egypt with plagues, and he splits the Red Sea so his people can cross. All that stuff is incredibly important, but it's not just history. It also tells us something about our lives before God, too. So now I want you to take what you've heard me talk about, how Old Testament stories, how we can see Jesus in them. And I want you to journal through this section of Exodus with that in mind. Hey, hope you're doing all right. Have a good night. See you next time.